So now that we have our picnic table done, let's talk about how we could 3D print it. And if we just go ahead and take the, the whole object here and export it as an STL file, so we can bring it into our slicing software. There we go, just do that, in place. Doesn't matter what you call it or where you put it, as long as you can find it. And so now I'm going to go ahead and import that picnic table onto my slicing software. And let's just go ahead and slice it. And as you can see, there's so much support material that you'd have to pick away that that's going to, first of all, it's going to waste a lot of filament. It's going to take 15 hours to print because it has to print all of that support material and um, it's not going to be very well finished because while the top of the table and the top of the seats will be nice and smooth you're going to have to do a lot of cleanup work so i'm just going to go ahead and delete that and so let's go back in here into tinkercad and just try to extract this into three or four pieces that we can print and then we can glue it together so uh, first thing I'm going to do is ungroup it and I've got some basic elements here so let's see I'm going to begin by grabbing this bench here and by the way you can see that I put in those little 2x4 supports there um, I added those made them the same way that I made the seat supports and you know the table supports and all the rest to just cut off the ends of 2x4 30 degrees and centered it so anyways I'm just going to copy that I'm going to paste it and let's see I'm going to zoom way out here I'm going to grab what I pasted make sure that I whoop, make sure that I've got everything so I'm going to group that together so it's now just one shape and let's see I'm just going to go ahead and export that as a seat Next I'm going to go ahead and grab the four legs and the two seat supports and I think when I clicked on this I duplicated them they are kind of grouped together if you will and then I'll hold down my shift key and grab the legs and this time I'm just going to say duplicate and just going to take it drag, drag them out like this. There we go. And then I'm going to take this, I'm just going to completely ungroup it. Box, let's see, okay, so that's for my legs. I need that group. So let's see, is this separate? Let's ungroup that. Okay, and I need those as well, but let's just see if we have separate elements, and we do. So now I'm just going to go ahead and recut them. So I'll take this, and this, and this hole here I'll group them together and then I'm going to take all four of these things and group them together and I've now got a set of legs that is just one shape now your path to get to this point is going to be a little bit different I don't need this one and you'll see why in just a bit but I'm going to go ahead and export that as an STL file. I'm just going to call it legs. So what I have left to uh, grab is the tabletop and the braces. So let's just come into a front view here. Let's um, I'll grab the braces and the tabletop with a selection box. Hold down my shift key, grab this um, table support and grab this right table support and Let's see this time just duplicate it again move it out and I'm going to basically do the same thing again here so now I'm just going to go ahead and export this shape as an STL file so now I'm in my slicing software you might be using Cura um, I'm using uh, Prusa Slicer uh, both are, between those two they're the most popular slicing programs out there so let's see, let's go ahead and import our objects. So there's my seat. 
and import another one there's my legs and then there's my tabletop so let's go ahead and start to do a little bit of rearranging here first thing I'm going to do is get the surfaces that I want to be laying flat on the print bed uh, turned around that's really easy with Prusa slicer so I just click on this click on the tabletop and it flips it for me I'll come down here select this lay those down and this needs to be turned upside down so I'll click it once there we go so let's see let's go to our top view here and let's see I got tape up oh, okay so I'll go back to my move tool here actually I can just select any of these doesn't matter what tool I'm using and uh, copy and paste it and same thing with my seats since I need two of those copy and paste it and then I've got a button right up here called auto arrange so it goes ahead and takes its best guess at arranging things but lots of times I have to do this so I'll just and slide that down like so it's kind of a tight fit but it, it does all fit Let's see I'll bring this around like this and then rotate it and uh, you don't have to rotate it exactly 90 degrees it doesn't uh, doesn't matter so much and because I'm lazy I'm just gonna take and copy and paste that again arrange it like so still got an item outside so I'll delete that and my warning down the lower right hand corner tells me that I'm now in good shape so I think that's what I want to do let's go ahead and slice it tool path outside the print area was detected okay and what that's telling me is that I'm going outside of that grid that is on the table and when I zoom in here like this, I can see that there is the offending uh, part right there. So, and that's just a bead of filament that goes around all of your geometry, kind of gets a nice flow going with the 3D printer. And it's also something that as it starts to lay it down, you can try to rub it off to with your finger uh, to get a feel for whether or not you have good bed adhesion. So let's just go back and uh, do a little bit of rearranging here. I think I'd be better off taking this and rotating it about 90 degrees. There we go. I take this and put it over there. Then we're gonna take take this, rotate it 90. And you don't have to rotate 90 degrees, by the way. It doesn't have to be perfectly 90. Uh, 3D printer is still gonna do a good job. There you go, that's pretty close. If you want to get exactly 90, you've got these boxes down here where you can go ahead and put in the exact number of degrees you want. So I'll put that there. I'll put that there. I'll nudge this down just a touch. Actually, I can nudge these down more. And you can do scaling. You know, if this really didn't fit and I didn't want to go back into Tinkercad, I can take and type the scale tool and then right down here the scale factor is 100% uh, the little lock is there so I could go ahead and say scale this down 90% hit enter and it makes it smaller for me but I'm gonna get it all to fit so I'm gonna bump this back up to 100 then I'm gonna bring select my tabletop and bring it over and now when I slice it I think we're going to be in good shape. Yep, no warning. So let's take a look at this here and see what we got now for fill material, or excuse me, support material. We're going to have to pick some out there, but everything else should be nice and smooth. And then underneath the seat support, uh, there's no way we can get around um, not having it, some uh, fill material there. But other than that, that's about it. And look at our print time now with the same settings it's now about seven hours so we've cut the print time at least in half and I don't know how much filament we're saving but uh, 
I think you're going to find that when you're 3D printing, you know, when you have a classroom full of students that want to all print their picnic tables, anything you can do to save time is uh, worth the effort. So let's go ahead and export our G-code. That is the file that your 3D printer is going to read. doesn't really matter what you call it. Every 3D printer is going to export a little different uh, format. And so now I'm going to pull over my 3D printing window. Um, I run this with a Raspberry Pi little server that's connected to the USB port on my 3D printer so that I can 3D print over the network. Plus it allows me to monitor. So if I come up here under control, I can see the camera, uh, which is just a $20 wise cam that I went ahead and uh, converted. I have a separate video on that. But uh, let's go ahead and get printing here. So I'm going to upload my file. There it is right there. And all I have to do is come up here, click on print. And now I can come in and monitor my temperature. You can see that what I have it set for, a goal of 245 degrees Celsius for the, for the hot end or the, of the extruder and the bed at 65 degrees. Um, so stuff gets hot. You don't, you don't want to be touching this stuff while it's actually printing. And this starts to give me a graph of what we have going. So I'm just going to go ahead and pause the video here while it heats up. Okay, so we're getting pretty close to our target temperature. So let's come in here, see what's going on. Okay, the printer's coming to life. Oops, looks like I have a little bit of a goober on there. Now the printer is self-leveling. It's just going and touching nine different control points. The proof of printer will actually do 27 if you want, but I don't really find that necessary. Now it's just laying down a little sample of bead. All printers do this just to kind of get the flow going. Now it's making that outline. I'm going to go check the adhesion with my finger. I don't try to pick it off with my fingernail. I just want to see if it is going to come loose, if it's sticking. It doesn't have you don't want it to stick too hard. Okay, now it's going ahead and uh, starting to print the very first layer. We can um, come into here, G Code Viewer, and it'll actually show us what it's doing in real time. It's kind of interesting. This is all the G code that is getting sent to the printer. Honestly, I don't I don't understand it. You know, I'm just thankful that there are a lot of smart people out there that uh, specialize in this that have a much better idea. And then this is the time lapse setting. So I'm just going to come back to here and I'm going to go ahead and stop recording right now. This could take about seven hours. Uh, we're going to go pick up. Uh, both of our boys are coming home from Mother's Day, so that's kind of exciting. And uh, I'll share with you the time lapse and how to assemble it uh, in the next chapter.
Okay, here's our uh, final result. You can see the support material underneath uh, our legs in the seat support. You can see lots of support material here underneath the 2x4 braces. And we don't have any support material here. Now one of the things that I love about my 3D printer is that it has a fantastic print bread. It's made out of spring steel. And so all I have to do to separate the parts, rather than trying to scrape them off or whatever, is just flex the plate. And so, for example, here's our legs right here. Is that auto-focusing? hope so. And we can just pull some of this off easily. The best tool is some, some uh, needle-nose pliers. And I like to roll it like this. Well, I would say that, and now it's not coming off the way I want it to. Anyways, this is why we don't want a whole bunch of support material if we can possibly avoid it, because this is just kind of tedious work. I'm going to go get another favorite tool of mine here. Be just a second. These are cheap and they're really, really sharp and they do a good job. They also will cut you in a heartbeat. So you have to be super careful with them. Um, they make different holders for them. If you have an X-Acto knife, that's good as well. So anyways, I'll just go in here and take care of that support material and uh, eventually get it all off. You get the idea. Okay, next, um, our benches here, or excuse me, our seats. They didn't need anything. I mean, they're just nice and smooth. We've got the seat support. That's why this I added this seat support at the last minute was so they would help hold these, these two together. Got a little extra filament there that we can clean off. just that quick. That's why I like these um, straight, edge res straight edged razor blades. So we got that piece and then finally our table here, our table top. Again, just a little cleanup to do there on the end. Put a little bit of seat material, excuse me, put a little bit of support material uh, between the two by sixes to make up the top to support that piece right there. So that's why I'm cleaning that out right now. But here's here's you know what we've got now. Let's see I'm gonna zoom in here. You can kind of see that it's not, at least I hope you can. It doesn't look like the autofocus is working super well. So anyways, we'll just um, come in and take that out. Carefully. Look at that. See, that worked really well and it's really clean. Let's see if the other side does it. It seems to have a little different pattern than the other side. Not quite sure what that's all about, but as the lovely Mrs. Westland often tells me, you know, Eric, you don't know everything. But that came out really well too. I am really happy with the way that worked. So, I'm going to go ahead and glue it together. I know you know how to glue, but in conclusion, I will tell you that this stuff right here is what you want to use for most of your 3D printing assemblies. Um, this brand is Gorilla Super Glue, and it has a built-in brush, which is nice. And it's it's not like regular Super Glue. It's a little bit thicker, so when you put pieces together it dries fast but the glue doesn't run all over the place and like I said it's not really expensive and it works works really well
Okay, so there it is. I um, just let it sit. Doesn't take very long for the super glue to stick, and I managed to get it all done without cutting myself while cleaning it and uh, not gluing my fingers together because uh, super glue will definitely do that, as I'm sure you know. I went out in the garage and grabbed this tool. It's just a little bit easier to hold on to. You can get these for cheap at Home Depot or whatever. Uh, it just holds a straight aged um, razor blade. And as long as you're not cutting towards yourself, and sometimes it's hard not to, but just keep in mind that if that blade slips, you're going to um, you're going to get cut. So there's our picnic table. I think it turned out pretty good. I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, as always, if you have any questions, just let me know.